Greetings everybody, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Somebody asked me to do a Bible study on saints, S-A-I-N-T-S. And no, we're not talking about a football team based out of New Orleans. I don't watch football anymore. Uh, <laughs> did you know the NFL is a tax-exempt foundation? Yeah, they don't pay any taxes. And who builds the stadiums? Uh, the taxpayers do. Yeah. Man, what kind of a scam is that? Yeah, when I started finding out this kind of stuff, I kind of lost interest in football. Of course, Dad always wanted me to be a, a baseball player. You know, it was America's favorite pastime I heard dad was actually uh, had it offered to be drafted by the minors uh, minor league baseball team but uh, Japan decided to attack Pearl Harbor and yeah that was the uh, end of that so yeah so the Saints who 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 decides what the Saints are well I'm gonna give you a little secret it's not the Vatican. They don't decide who the saints are. No. Now, if you want to know the meaning of a word in the Bible, it's best that you get a King James. And they have a thing called what some people call the law of first mention. A lot of times, maybe not always, I'm not sure, I haven't tested it with every single word, but generally, if you look up the first time a word appears in the Bible, the King James, and check the context, it will give you an idea of what the meaning of that word is. And uh, it only works with the King James because the modern Bible's change words i mean they might even change the same word to two or three other different words so that you don't make the connection you know when you hear a word or a phrase used in different parts of the bible whether it's the new or the old testaments um they change that so that you the meaning is lost the new bible versions of course what do you expect when you find out that the um what was the number one selling Bible was the NIV for at least, I think, one or two years in a row. And the NIV is uh, printed by Zondervan, which used to be owned by uh, Bernie Zondervan. And uh, I believe they were Christians. But they were sold out to HarperCollins. And Harper Collins prints the Satanic Bible by the Church of Satan, who was founded by Anton LaVey. His real name was Levy. Uh, yeah, if you would have thought he was of the, uh, the Chosen, you would be right. You'd be correct, you know. But uh, yeah, so the largest printer of so-called Bibles in the English-speaking world is Zondervan, and their own, their parent company prints Satanic Bibles by the Church of Satan. Yeah. Yeah, and, and they have the exclusive print rights for the NIV. Guess who HarperCollins' uh, parent company is? The News Corporation. You would know them as Fox Television, Fox Sports, Fox News, Fox... Yeah, you get the idea. Yeah, tell that fox Herod, Jesus said. You know, yeah, that's why you need to stick with the King James. And when people uh, say, oh, you're one of those King James only people. Oh, you're a heretic. Tell them that uh, they're a Church of Satan heretic. Go use your NIV. And then when you point that stuff out, they'll say, well, we don't use the NIV. We we like the NASB or 
uh, the ASB or whatever, you know, the American Standard Bible or American Standard Version or New American Standard Bible or whatever, you know, yeah, yeah, they're a bunch of, you know, I think the NASB has a uh, approved Vatican edition, Catholic edition. I think so. I'm not sure. All I know is stick with the King James, you know. And if people can't prove you wrong, they'll just call you names, you know. That's what they do, you know. So whatever. So what are the Saints? Well, if it's not a New Orleans football team, and if it's not some people at the Vatican decides, uh, what does the Bible say? The King James. Well, the first time the word saints appears in the King James is in the book of Deuteronomy, the third book of the Bible, and it's in chapter 33. One of the Masonic Lodge's favorite numbers, right? So, why don't we take a look at the law of what they call, some people call the law of first mention, and see the context. And that'll give you an idea of what it means. And by the way, people, I'm sorry about uh, getting behind on the emails. I, I think uh, I'm going to try to catch up on all my emails. Uh, a lot of people have been writing me and it's been really hard going back to work. You know, I'm in my mid sixties and I went back to work full time. And, uh, you know, I felt I had to, man, especially when gasoline was close to five bucks a gallon. I figured I better get back to work. Who doggy? Yeah. So, yeah, I was kind of hoping to retire and spend full time doing ministry. But, uh, yeah, the way the economy's going, I, yeah, you get the idea. Well, before we do that, um, before we go start looking at saints, I want to mention a couple of uh, lies that the enemy is pushing. You know, the uh, the enemy hates the word election or chosen uh, in the Bible. They don't want you to know that Christians are the elect, the chosen people. They don't Mm -mm, they hate that. No, they want you to think that the satanic uh, line, and if you don't believe that, uh, <laughs> take a look at Genesis chapter 6, sons of God, and compare that with Job 38. Uh, the sons of God shouted for joy before at the foundation of the earth. Uh, Adam didn't come until six days after the earth was created. You know, Adam was not shouting for joy before he was created. It doesn't work that way, people. So the sons of God have to be angels. There's only three classes of sons of God. Angels, and in Luke chapter 3, Adam is called a son of God, because after all, who was his father? And then Jesus is called the only begotten son of God. So, you know, the... Uh, Church world wants you to think that anybody can be saved, including the Canaanites and Esau, who God hated, Malachi chapter 1. You know, <laughs> they want you to think, oh, Esau can be saved. Uh, never mind his sin, their sins, never mind, you know. But uh, they hate the idea that Christians are the chosen people. Of course, they have no problems with the antichrist being the chosen people and if you don't know what an antichrist is well let me give you the bible definition of an antichrist and you can find that in uh first john uh chapter two let's see yeah, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 22. 
John says, Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Because whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. So if you deny the Son, you're denying the Father that sent the Son. And if you don't know who this applies to, well, if you don't know who the Antichrists are, may I suggest you call your local sin of Gog and ask the rab by if Jesus is the Christ or Messiah. And when they say no, because after all, if they thought he was the Christ, the Messiah, they wouldn't be what they are. They would be Christians, right? Yeah. They would be Christians, wouldn't they? If they followed Christ, wouldn't they be Christians? Of course they would. But no, they deny because they're waiting for their Messiah to come. So they are, by Bible definition, antichrists. And the churches want you to believe that the antichrists are the chosen ones. Yeah, how does that work? Uh, yeah, the, the, the antichrists are God's chosen. Uh, for what? For hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is the kind of garbage that uh, they teach nowadays. So, yeah. And another favorite of mine, uh, you know, so let's see, election, Antichrist, and, uh, uh, and the Mandela effect, which, why in the world would you name something after a communist in South Africa that's murdering the Christians. You know, Nelson Mandela. I got videos of him where he talks about the uh, you-know-whos and how they're on good terms. And he's a communist. I mean, he admits it. I'm a communist. ANC, you know, African National Congress. And he's with his fist up raised behind a, uh, a, a red black, uh, Soviet communist flag. You know, I mean, come on people. But the Mandela effect, if you don't know what it is, is uh, the belief that Satan went back in time and changed the Bible. And of course, God was powerless to stop him, you know. Uh, yeah, does that make any sense? So here it is, God goes to Satan and says, Hey, uh, Satan, will you please quit changing my Bible? And Satan says, Oh, yeah, God, yeah, make me quit changing your Bible. And God says, Well, you know, Satan, I, I can't stop you. You know that. And Satan says, Ha ha, I'm more powerful than you, God. And God says, Well, you know, you got a point there. Uh, this is the stupidity of the Bible being changed. It, it makes the Lord a powerless fool. So, you know, the Mandela effect is just a satanic lie. Another one. Why do people remember different things in the Bible? Well, they remember satanic preachers and modern Bible changes, you know. So, unless the Lord gives one understanding, they're lost on people spiritually. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 2.14, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. You see, people, these things are lost on people. Um, you know, if Satan's able to go back in time and change the Bible, 
And some people will say, oh, it's the CERN, you know, C-E-R-N. Yeah. Uh, and then people will say, oh, remember a pastor uh, saying it's it was the lion and not the wolf in Isaiah 11, 16, where it says, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the ki calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. And they'll say, oh, it's not the wolf. It was a lion. And, and Satan went back in time and changed wolf to lion. Well, God promised to preserve his words. God promised to preserve his words. And if things were changed, then he failed. And he's a failure. And he's a powerless, worthless Savior, why should I believe anything if that's true? The lion shall lay down with the lamb was a lyric from a song that was popular in 1937 called Peace in the Valley, and it was written by a Thomas Dorsey. And then it was made popular by a Red Foley and the Sunshine Boys in 1951, um, and it was recorded by a Sam Cook of the Soul Stirrers in 1950, and it rose to a limited success. But then Elvis Presley, you know Elvis the pel pelvis? Yeah, guess what? I saw him on Ed Sullivan's show. Yeah, I'm pretty old. Uh, saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan too. But uh, Elvis uh, recorded the song on his first Christmas album, with the Jordanaires, Peace in the Valley, which received worldwide fame. And on January 6, 1957, Elvis sang Peace in the Valley on that Ed Sullivan show. And, you know, after the Elvis uh, rendition of the song and its popularity, many pastors, so-called, and ministers around the nation began integrating their ly the lyrics of the song into their sermons. So is that what all of us remember? Yeah. Yeah, the lion with the the lion with the lamb. Oh, but God God was powerless when Satan went back in time and changed you know, changed everything. Ugh. And then there's another fun thing. They'll say, "Oh, his name cannot be Jesus because there's no J in the Hebrew language. So Jerusalem's not Jerusalem? Really? And, uh, you know, the J and then the uh, E and W's are, are not, you know, because there's no J. So they're not Jews. Well, <laughs> maybe that's true. Maybe they're not. Yeah. Yeah, there's no J, so his name can't be Jesus. So, yeah, his name is whatever they say it is. See, the name Jesus casts out devils. And you don't believe that? All right, let's take a look at uh, Luke chapter 9. Yeah, I'll get to the saints, you know, but I'm just kind of throwing this out there. Um, Luke chapter 9, verse 48. Um, no, 47. And Jesus, perceiving the thought of their heart, took a child and set him by him. See, these Yeshua people, uh, they want you to think that your entire King James Bible is wrong. And we should go sit at the feet of rabbis to learn about Yeshua HaMashiach. You know, the guy that they've rejected for the last 2,000 or so, or about 2,000 years. Yeah, let's learn, let's learn from those that rejected him. Right. So Jesus took a child and set him by him and said unto them, Whosoever shall receive this child in my name... Hmm. Whosoever shall receive this child in 
my name receiveth me, and whosoever shall receive me receiveth him that sent me. Who sent Jesus? God the Father sent Jesus. Remember the Antichrist? If you reject the Son, you don't have the Father either? Yeah. Yeah. Boy, you never hear that stuff preached in a church because they want you to think the Antichrist are the chosen ones. See, their job is to lead you away from the truth not and pass that collection plate. Yeah, that's the most important thing. You got to tithe. God forbid you don't tithe to the church. Well, the tithe was for the tribe of Levi, and that was for the Old Testament. And unless your pastor was a of the tribe of Levi, he's not even authorized to collect tithes. Devil he is. Whosoever shall receive the child in my name receiveth me. And whosoever shall receive me receiveth him that sent me. For he that is least among you, the same shall be great. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. What name? Yeshua HaMashiach? Oh, devil, I cast you out in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. I don't think so. Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. And we forbade him because he followed not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not. For he that is not against us is for us. Yeah. You want to cast out devils? You better use the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. I don't think there's any power in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. But, uh, you know, they want you to think your entire, your Bible's wrong. The entire New Testament's wrong. The names are wrong. They're changing the Bible. And everything in the Bible's wrong. Don't believe it. And they're waiting for their Messiah to come and uh, want you to take his mark, you know? The mark and the number of his name, 666. And if you do that, I don't care what TBN says. You do that and you're going to hell. That's what Jesus promised. There's people say, well, you know, Lord, I, I had to take the mark of the beast to, to feed my children. And you wouldn't want my children to go hungry now, would you, Lord? What's Jesus going to say? Oh, so you took the mark of the beast to feed your children. So you didn't trust me enough to feed your children, huh? You didn't trust me enough to take care of you and your children. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, Jesus speaking. He says, no man can serve two masters, for he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is basically riches. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? What is raiment? Clothing. Behold, oh, and by the way, that's the only two things the Lord promises you in this life is food and clothing. That's it. That is the only two things you're promised in this life. Food and clothing. I mean... No, you're not promised a, a car and a house and, you know, Janice Joplin singing, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? Uh, she wasn't singing to the God of heaven. No, she's talking about the other guy. Yeah. Yeah, Janice Joplin. I remember that song. Jesus says, Behold the fowls of the air. 
for they sow not. Do the birds in the air, do they sow seeds in the ground? Do they plow the ground and plant seeds and water them every day? No. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Yeah, you're better than they are, and God feeds them. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto a stature? What's a cubit? About, yeah, about 18 inches, or, you know, a foot and a half, or about half a meter, for those of you in the UK or uh, EU. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, Take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? After all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. See, we're to seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, not ours. You know, the Pharisees, the you-know-whos, they were always, their, right, their righteousness was in keeping the laws. But Jesus says, none of you keep the law, and you don't. I mean, if you break a law one time, you're guilty. So we got to seek his righteousness. Who is the only sinless man that ever lived on the face of the earth? Well... 1 Timothy 3.16 says he was God come in the flesh. Yeah. God the Father sent his only begotten Son. His righteousness, not ours. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil of thereof all right i'm through uh let, let's go do the saints thing so yeah stick with the king james bible and you know um in james chapter one it says if any of you lack understanding let him ask of um god for understanding i think i'm paraphrasing but you get the idea Get on your hands and knees and ask the Lord for understanding. Um, you know, that was one of the first things I did when I returned back to the Lord in late 1989. I asked the Lord for understanding and to not deceive me. Yeah, God deceives people. He does. If you love your sin more than you love the Lord, he'll deceive you. Read Romans chapter 1. I can show you churches in San Francisco. You know what San Francisco is famous for? Um, uh, let's just say that men who prefer the company of men and women that prefer the company of women. That's, yeah, if you catch my drift. I'm trying to be family friendly here, people. But... Uh, uh, yeah, that's what they're famous for. And you know, there's churches, so-called, in Frisco, that will use an NIV Bible and tell these people that uh, because they're in a loving, committed relationship, they're saved. And God blinds their eyes. God calls that type of behavior an abomination, which if you don't know what an abomination is, it's a sin that God especially hates. I mean, really, 
really, really hates. I mean, God hates all sin. And oh, by the way, people, the Bible talks about the gr a greater sin and a greater damnation. And there's also uh, those that will get, uh, uh, well, let's just say when Jesus was talking to Pilate, let's take a look. All right, let's go to John chapter 19. Jesus has been delivered to Pontius Pilate by the you-know-who, and he's been given a trial, you know, by the Roman governor. So Pilate, and went again, verse uh, John 19, 9, and went again into the judgment hall and saith unto Jesus. So here it is, Pilate's talking to Jesus. He says, Once art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then said Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus, don't you know who you're talking to? I could let you go, or I could kill you. That's the Bob translation. Verse 11, Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. You know, there's a sin, and then there's a greater sin. Yeah. Yeah, people don't, uh, you know, they, don't, they, they think it's all sin is sin. I wonder if there's different levels of heat in hell. You know, like hot sauces, you got mild, medium, and hot, and extra hot, and yeah. I wonder. I don't know. I'm just guessing. And, you know, it's not a doctrine, but. But by the same token, there's going to be people, uh, when you read the story of the guy with the talents, somebody was given five talents, somebody was given two talents, somebody else was given one talent. The guy with the five talents traded and got ten, and Jesus said he was going to make him a ruler over ten cities. Wow. And then the guy with two talents traded and got four. He was made ruler over four cities. And the, the guy with one talent did nothing with it. And uh, Jesus called him a wicked and slothful servant. Sloth. What is a sloth? Well, a sloth is a, it's an animal, moves very, very slow. But it basically means lazy. So why is it that one person is going to have power over 10 cities? He's going to be a ruler over 10 cities. I mean, so, and one guy is going to have power over four cities. Hmm. Well, I got the numbers wrong. But if you want to read about the talents, look at Matthew 25. Um, and you could read, you know, Matthew 25, 21. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Those are the what one two three four five six seven eight those are eight words i want to hear one day enter thou into the joy of thy lord verse 22 he also that had received two talents came and said lord thou deliverest unto me two talents behold i have gained two other talents beside them he had four his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things i will make thee ruler over many things Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Ooh. 
Yeah, you could read this. And uh, yeah, well, the, the, the guy that didn't do anything with his talent, the, the talent, Jesus said, 30, verse 30, And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, you know, why, is, why does the Lord say holy angels? Because there are unholy angels. Yeah, yeah, Satan and his, his, his gaggle, unholy angels. And all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Goats. What is the symbol of the church of Satan? A goat? Yeah. Yeah. You think that's a coincidence? You ever heard of Baphomet? Uh, B-A-P-H-O-M-E-T, I think it's spelled. You know, it's a man's body with a goat's head. Yeah, I, I, I wonder, what a coincidence, huh? Yeah. Verse 33, so yeah, he's going to separate the sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Isn't it funny how... Communists call themselves the left. Hmm, is that another coincidence? Is that a coincidence? Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked and ye clothed me, I was sick and ye visited me, I was in prison and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee, see, thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them, on the left hand, yeah, you're left, the left wingers, words I pray that I'll never hear. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. There's holy angels, and then there's the devil and his angels. And those people that claim to be believers, Jesus says, For I was in hunger, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, you took me not in. Naked, you clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and you visited me not. Woof. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Read James chapter 2 if you don't believe this. I mean, I'll believe the words of Christ, but, you know. Works are not going to get you into heaven. But works are proof of what you believe. You know? If you wouldn't help a brother in Christ, you have no faith. I mean, seriously. You know? All right, let's go read about the saints. All right, let's get going on the Bible study here. Deuteronomy 33. 
one of the Masonic Lodge's favorite numbers. Uh, when you read in the Bible about Satan took a third of the angels, what is a third percentage-wise? 33 and a third. Uh, when you bought a, a record, <laughs> you know, vinyl, yeah, I know, I'm old. Uh, what was what was long play records? What what was their revolutions per minute? Thirty three and a third, right? Did they just pick that number arbitrarily? Why did they pick thirty three? Why not thirty two or thirty five or thirty eight? Uh, why? Well, yeah, it makes you wonder. I don't know. So, verse one. You know, when you know the uh, satanic symbolism and their little catchphrases and their little words, and they, 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 mock, they mock us. And being that the church world doesn't even bother to read the Bible, they, have, they got no idea. You know, that's why the, the world's in such a mess. And because they tolerate all this evil, God's going to allow this evil to not tolerate the church. You know, I've been telling people about uh, the Bible getting banned for hate crimes for probably at least 15 years. But it's, it's coming. It's coming, people. Bible's going to be called hate speech, and they're going to ban it. So, matter of fact... U.S. State Department already has a statement on hate speech and um, anti-Semitism. And when you read it, um, guess what? King James is right there. Yeah. They're just not enforcing it yet. Um, it's basically a policy. I think, I'm not sure if it's a law or not, but uh, there's no penalty yet. But it's coming. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Matter of fact, the uh, you know who's say that Rabbi Menachem Schneerson, uh, he was a Noahide. They named the Noahide laws in his honor. They said that he kept the law perfectly. He never broke one of God's laws. So he's the Messiah. He died, and they're still waiting for him to dig his way out of the grave. But. Uh, I think they're going to be waiting for a little while longer, you know. Seriously, they, 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 when he died and they buried him, uh, they looked for him. They, they kept a watch there for 24 hours for I don't know how long, but they waited for him to rise up out of the grave. Yeah, he's going to rise up from the grave all right at the, uh, uh, the second resurrection. The first resurrection's for the saints. The second one's for the the goats. Yeah. All right, let's read Deuteronomy 33. Wow, I've been talking for 45 minutes, and we haven't even started the Bible study. So, Verse 1. And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai. And rose up from Seir unto them. He shineth forth from Mount Paran. And he came with ten thousands of saints. So, saints are tied in with Israel. And if you think the Antichrists are Israel, well... You're confused, and um, what can I tell you? There's a lot of confused people who never read their Bibles. They won't bother. People died. People died to give us the Bible in our language. Burned at the stake, uh, and, and people won't even bother to read it. It's just not worth, it's not worth wasting their time. Yeah. Well, I don't understand it. 
Well, read James chapter 1 where it says, Ask the Lord for understanding. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God in faith. Well, I'm paraphrasing, but yeah. And he came with ten thousands of saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. Yea, he loved the people. Who? The Lord. He loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand, and they sat down at thy feet. Every one shall receive of thy words. Mm. Moses commanded us a law. You know, Moses, you ever heard of him? Yeah, the guy that came down from the mountain with the two tablets of stone, with the laws written by the hand of God, the finger of God. Yeah, that, that guy. Moses commanded us a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to what? Israel. And he was a king in Jeshurun when the heads of the people and the tribes of Israel were gathered together. Oh. Who was the king? Christ. Well, God the Father was king. He was the king. He was the he wanted he wanted to be the king. And I think it was in the book of Samuel that uh, the people said, eh, nah, we don't want a king. We don't want the Lord as a king. We want an earthly king. So, and that's how they got Saul. And then Saul got replaced by King David, who got replaced by Solomon. And it went downhill fast after that. Yeah. So, saints are tied in with Israel. All right, let's uh, read 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 1. I don't think we're going to read every uh, mention of saints in the Bible. Uh, let's see, where is... It's mentioned 95 times uh, according to uh, the King James Bible online, which I think is uh, kind of junk. So they've got a discussion page, the KingJamesBibleOnline.org. They got a discussion page, and guess what? Chaplain Bob's been banned because Chaplain Bob mentions who the Antichrists are. Yeah, so I got banned for that. I, you know, you get banned for quoting Jesus on a Bible site. Yeah. You know what? All these pre-trib rapture people. What do you think they're going to do when uh, when they have to die for their faith? What do you think they're going to do? Matthew 24, people. They're going to they're going to turn against God's people. Yeah. Why you don't believe in the pre-trib rapture or blessed hope? You're not even saved. I've heard that a few times. You're not even saved if you don't believe in the pre-trib rapture. Boy, them people are going to... They're the nastiest people in the world. They really are. You know? They're the ones that... They wouldn't take in your, their house when uh, you were homeless and outside in the winter time. And there's snow on the ground and it's cold. They wouldn't give you a, a coat when they got five coats in their closet and and they haven't worn three of them in five years. You think they'd reach in the closet and give you a coat? No. You think they'd give you a bowl of food? No, they'd rather throw it in the garbage. I mean, I've been to these places. I've been to these churches. Boy, I tell you what, they've they've really well, I gotta realize it was the Lord that gave me this education. I gotta realize so. All right, let's read about saints. First book of Samuel, chapter 2, verse 1. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. 
Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee. There is there, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of, our, out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. That's right. The Bible, the word of God, is a God of uh, is knowledge. And our actions are going to be weighed. You know, these people will say, you don't. All you got to do is believe in Jesus and you're saved. Well, I guess, I guess uh, James chapter 2, I guess Satan's saved because he believes in Jesus. Absolutely. The devils that were cast out of a man, they knew who Jesus was. They knew he was the Christ. They knew that. Are they saved? No. Because their actions are evil. Your actions, your fruit is proof of what you believe. Are you seeking God's righteousness? You know, people that have no fruit in their Christian walk, so-called, they're going to be in trouble. If they do make it in, they're not going to have any rewards in heaven. So, verse 4, the bowels of the mighty, uh, the bows, the bows of the mighty men are broken. You know, like bows and arrow. And they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that were full, you know, full bellies, have hired themselves out for bread. And they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren hath borne seven. Barren, a barren womb, you know, a woman that was childless, had seven children. You know, that's what the Lord wants us to. Be fruitful and multiply. The world says, don't have children. They're a burden. They'll put you into poverty. Have an abortion. Have several abortions. So that the barren hath borne seven, and she that hath many children is waxed feeble. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. It's called the resurrection, people. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints. Saints. He will keep the feet of his saints. And the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. But 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 God loves everybody, people. Uh, I, I don't think God loves his adversaries. I don't think so. What is an adversary? It's an enemy. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king, and exalt the horn of his anointed. Hmm, there we go. In 2 Chronicles 6.41 Now therefore arise, O Lord God, into thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation clothed with salvation 
Where do we read about that? Oh, wait. Yeah, that's in the book of Revelation where uh, it talks about people being given white robes washed in the blood of the Lamb. Isn't that? Yeah, that's in there. Let thy priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let thy saints, no, not New Orleans, and let thy saints rejoice in goodness. Now, if you want to read uh, this stuff in context, you know, you can always do that. But Psalms 16 and verse 3. But to the saints that are in the earth and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. See, those that belong to the Lord, that do those things that are pleasing in his sight, They are the excellent in whom the Lord delights. Psalms 30 and verse 4. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. See, only the Lord's holy. Uh, the only way I'm going to be holy is if uh, one day the government puts some bullets into my body. That's the only way I'm going to be holy. Oh, wait, that's a different holy, yeah. Psalms 31, 23. Oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints. Those that love the Lord, those are his saints. For the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. I forget, uh, I think it was Paul that says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Uh, it's kind of a paraphrase, but yeah. What does it mean, do the word? Well, Jesus said, you know, visit the sick, feed the, feed, you know, feed the hungry, clothe the naked. I mean, you know, that's loving your neighbor. You see your neighbor freezing to death, no food. I mean, you know, give them a coat, feed them. So, let's see. Psalms thirty-seven twenty-eight. For the Lord loveth judgment. You know, righteous judgment, right? For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The seed of the wicked. People, look at the parable of the wheat and the tares, the weeds. You know, the church world turns that into a fairy tale so psalms 50 and verse 5 gather my saints together unto me those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice uh, let's see all right psalms um 89 5 in the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation, congregation of the saints. Hmm. Psalms 97.10. Ye that love the Lord. Didn't Jesus say uh, that was the great commandment in the law, to love the Lord? And the second was like unto it, love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two hang all the laws and the prophets. See, all these so-called Torah keepers deny the words of Christ. Yeah, they do. Because they're antichrists. They want you to think they're Christians, but they're not. Because they won't even say the name of Jesus. 
and they want you to keep other laws. Jesus said, love the Lord, love thy neighbor. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus didn't say, oh, keep the Sabbath. What, what did the Pharisees accuse Jesus of doing? Breaking the Sabbath. Yeah, there you go. You know, did Jesus say, keep the Sabbath and believe on me and thou shalt be saved? No. No, he didn't say that, did he? You know, if you love your neighbor and you see him cold, you're going to give him a coat. If you see him hungry, you're going to feed him. That's love. Read James chapter 2, if you doubt me. And if memory serves me correctly, J James grew up with a guy uh, named Jesus. He had a mother named Mary and a father named Joseph. Perhaps you heard of him. I think he knows a couple things about the Bible. What do you say? What do you say? Psalms 97, 10. Ye that love the Lord, hate evil. See, that's the problem with the church world today. The church world does not hate evil. They embrace it. They do. They tolerate it. If they hated evil, they would not tolerate it. It's disgusting. Well, one day the evil is going to decide they do not want to tolerate the church. And the Lord's going to give them into his hand. Yeah. One day they're going to have to flee into the wilderness. Oh, that's not going to happen, Chaplain Bob. We're going to fly away in the pre-trib rapture. And since you don't believe that, you're not even saved. Yeah. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. I used to be a volunteer at the South Florida VA uh, Veterans Cemetery, the Veterans Cemetery, South Florida. Boy, I've read this a few times there. Psalms 116 and verse 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. Boy. Wow. Psalms 132.16 I will also clothe her priests with salvation and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. 145.10 Psalms all the works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. All right, everybody, it's been an hour, and uh, I think we're going to come back, and I'm going to do uh, saints starting in the book of Daniel. I think it's chapter 7. Yeah, let me make sure. Uh, yeah, Daniel chapter 7. And, uh, do, 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 do. yeah, yeah, Daniel chapter 7 goes into uh, the saints, Daniel seven eighteen. but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. And we're going to I guess I'm going to have to do a little bit of commentary on Daniel. Uh, I feel comfortable on Daniel 7 as far as doing a commentary. I've done commentaries on a lot, a number of books on the Bible, uh, like Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, uh, even portions of Revelation. But Daniel, in my opinion, is the hardest one to me anyways i just don't think i could do it justice and i do not feel i understand it well enough to do it 
Uh, even Daniel asked for understanding, and he was told to seal up the words until the end. So uh, people are probably not going to understand this until the time comes. I mean, Daniel is a book for the end times. It really is. Uh, yeah, Daniel 9, uh, verse 24. It says, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins. Who's going to make an end of sins? God the Father through his Son, Jesus. And to make reconciliation for iniquity. Well, that's the blood of Christ. And to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Here we go. Let's take a look at Daniel chapter 12 real quick. Verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up. You know, Michael the archangel. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble. I think this ties into Matthew 24. Such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. What book? The book of life. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. And here's the resurrection, people. Some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But listen to this carefully. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Shut up the words and seal the book. Close it up. Even to the time of the end. So here it is. This, these, the words of Daniel are shut up and sealed until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. What kind of knowledge? Um, personally, I don't think it's knowledge of the Lord. I think it's just uh, technology. And I did a video on this very subject. I mean, look at it. Uh, 200 years ago, what was the main form of transportation? Animals, horses, camels, oxen. That was the main form of transportation 200 years ago. Were there airplanes 200 years ago? No. How about trains? No. No. Bicycles? No. People were using horses. Do you know that even on a ship, it took uh, weeks to travel across the Atlantic Ocean, from what I understand, by ship? Seriously. Driven with the wind. If you had a good wind, maybe the trip would be less. But what happens if you didn't have a good wind? The ship would just sit there and float. I understood uh, to go from England to America would take um, three weeks or so. And guess what? You get on what was the Concorde, you know, the supersonic transport. You could have breakfast in New York and dinner in London. I mean, seriously, that's unheard of. We didn't have refrigeration, air conditioning, electricity, lighting, uh, cars. 
Knowledge has increased tremendously in the last 200 years. It's incredible. It's incredible. I can call somebody in Thailand from Florida in the United States, somebody halfway across the world with uh, one of those smartphone thingies and see their face and talk to them. I just picked Thailand because, you know, it's, from what I understand, um, or China or whatever. But you could be, um, you know, when it's daytime here, it's night over there. Yeah. Or Australia. It's amazing, the technology. But this, these words of Daniel, these prophecies are sealed to the end, to the time of the end. Yeah. And uh, maybe that's why I don't feel I understand it. I wish I did, but I don't. So, yep, it's amazing, people. Knowledge has absolutely increased tremendously. So, uh, all right. Uh, I guess this is going to be part one of Saints because I'm not going to get into Daniel now you know it's we've already talked I've already yapped for an hour and uh, I got to answer some emails I'm way behind so all you people write me emails saying well Bob's not writing me back is he mad at me or whatever no I'm not mad at anybody so all blessings praise glory and honor in Jesus precious name amen